Hello and welcome. This is Deepak Mishra and today I am going to talk to you about my experience with a probation commission that is called approbation. Approbation is a exam. It's basically a permanent medical licensing exam. It is an equivalence exam which they also call it. Uh, it is to prove that uh, your education in a foreign country as a doctor, your MBBS study or your medical study uh, is equivalent. Your knowledge and your medical skills are equivalent to that of a German doctor. So if you have studied MBBS in Asia or in uh, other country outside European Union or maybe except Eastern European, Ukraine and Russia, they don't have to take this exam. Uh, but if you have studied in say uh, Asia or South America or Africa or Arab world, you will have to take this approbation exam and prove that your knowledge and skills are equivalent. So uh, after you apply for this exam, you get a termine. I'm, I'm talking about Nidhar Saxon state, that is Lower Saxony. And uh, after you apply for the exam, uh, it takes around seven to eight months till you not uh, when you get a, a feedback or a root meldum from Esther Grammar, that's the medical council, about the exam termine, exam date. So I got a letter in around September uh, 2016 about uh, that they have decided a date for me, they have a date free and they would uh, like me to take the exam on that date. And in the September end, I got the letter and that was for November beginning. So it was only one and a half months uh, grace period six weeks five to six weeks that was that time so uh, I did not want to take the exam that soon because I was not very sure that was enough time for me to like uh, prepare myself for the exam but then on that letter was also written that if you do not accept the date then uh, issue of next date when that will be cannot be set right now cannot be guaranteed and if your beruf's at Lovnis, that is a temporary license ends uh, before you get a next date, uh, then that shall not be renewed. So with that threat in my mind, I thought, okay, let's me, let, uh, let me give it a try and prepare for like six weeks and take the exam. So that's what I did. Uh, luckily, I had my leave planned during that time. So I had like four weeks of total free time. So I was planning to go back home, but then I'd cancel my tickets and everything, uh, go back home as in India, uh, but I cancel my tickets and everything so that I can sit at home without any work and study all day for that exam that's what i did and that's what paid off i think at the end so because before that i was totally unprepared uh, and i could not have done it but uh, i'll tell you so uh, you get six weeks grace uh, the notice period or six to four weeks you can count not always six weeks but uh, certainly you'll get a letter that okay this date you have to take the exam you accept it most of the times so you have to accept it and you prepare for the exam now uh, how we prepare for the exam things are there are basically two types of books that is fall book fall book has uh, there are 150 cases fall book inner medicine and chirurgy that is surgery and medicine uh, you prepare that and plus there's uh, fragun and voten so in that also inner medicine and chirurgy so even if you prepare one i would recommend fall book fall book i find better it the content is same in both the books it's not very different only the way of presentation and uh, the like compilation is different. But if you prepare one book thoroughly, it's sufficient. I would recommend fall book because I find it more methodical and more stepwise. So fall book for inner medicine and chirurgy and Ambos. Ambos is a website uh, where you can subscribe it for five euros a month and uh, uh, you have lots of information, all the basic information, whichever you don't understand. Uh, in fall book you can find it over there it is also in german but it is very simple it's very simply written with lots of references and lots of uh, pictures and everything that helps you a lot with the uh, mris photos uh, ct scans uh, ecg you can learn through that so i use that website as well uh, and fall book fall book reading once will not make sense you will find it very difficult to understand uh, because it's a foreign language you're learning medicine in german so uh, it will be difficult but then two readings three readings four readings you have to read till you actually can reproduce it you can talk in that language you have to read till that that's going to take time so it's better to start preparation beforehand not wait till the medical council sends you a letter of date so uh, you start preparing from that ambos you can use anytime and so it's also it's going to be helpful all the time because i think uh, german medical students also use that website because it's very uh, good 
quality things they have given in a very simple lucid manner that's highly recommended so uh, i'll now we go to the exam day how it all started yeah two weeks before the exam i got another letter from the medical council where the names of the faculty who were the part of the exam commission was given the name of the doctor and their speciality was given over there and also my exam center and uh, uh, exam like timings and everything those details were given so i knew beforehand who will be my examiners i knew uh, i could google uh, them the department their what kind of research they have done before what is the uh, subject of interest that sub sub uh, speciality of interest those things i could find out so from google so i knew who i'm going to meet over there it's very recommend uh, it's uh, highly recommended that you do that as well so that you know whom you are going to meet and you can expect what kind of questions will you will get from them it's not always as it does not go always as expected because a oncologist was asking me orthopedic questions but uh, uh, that i mean you cannot expect that but it's always you can prepare that way so it's not a guarantee that it go will go like that because exams are always unpredictable and oral exams are mostly unpredictable you don't know what's going to come it's better to uh, study well and prepare, prepare well for any oral exam uh, then we'll go on the exam date i went there uh, there were two more colleagues my exam was in hanover hanover uh, medicine hochschule hanover m h h hanover it's called and my examiner one was oncologist Uh, and one was a pediatric surgeon and one was a plastic surgeon so oncologist uh, he was the main examiner from them there's always a head and there are two uh, other proofers as examiners so oncologist was the head and uh, uh, i knew that because i come from a surgical background i am a uh, like assistant arts in on fall chirurgy here at the trauma surgery uh, trauma and orthopedics so i knew that it's always like that criss cross it's like uh, if you are a medicine resident you will have a, a surgical case if you are a surgical resident you will have a medicine case it's like that so i was a surgical resident surgical subspeciality so i knew that i am going to get a medicine case or my examiner at least that case presentation that thing will be with a medicine guy so i knew that beforehand everybody knows that so uh i went there in the morning uh, there were two other candidates sitting with me uh, we introduced to each other we introduced each other they were uh, medicine one was internal medicine one was algamine medicine uh, algamine medicine is like uh, general medicine what we have like gp general practice uh, that so uh, and that also matched properly because in examiner there were two surgeons one internist here there was two internist one surgical resident so the match was like that so that was appropriate then came uh, the examiners they introduced themselves and uh, they explained us they checked our ids and they asked us about our uh, details where do we come from little bit uh, it's a intro type of thing that where do you come from how long have you worked what field are you working in uh, how long have you learned the language those kind of things then after that uh, the medicine guy uh, oncologist asked me to follow him then the other two surgeons they asked other two candidates to follow them and they took them in separate separate uh, stations stations is wards with where the patients are so my oncologist uh, he took me to a ambulance there's a clinic but it's basically a opd outpatient department he took me over there and uh, he introduced me to a patient actually that was very untypical i was expecting to be in wards on a station where in a patient room or uh, the patient is admitted but he was this ambulant patient ambulant means the outpatient and he had come uh, to get his injections and uh, so he i was introduced to that patient so i was little bit i fumbled little bit because i was not prepared for the situation but then uh, slowly and steadily important thing in oral exam is to keep your calm Uh, so that your language does not become slurry because it's a foreign language if you get nervous you speak so you what you speak does not make any sense so it's very important to stay calm composed and take time take time because these exams are don't have to hurry you have to take time so he introduced me to the, uh, to the patient and explained to me that i have like say 30 to 30, 45 minutes to take the history and examine the patient and after that i'll have some time uh to write all the findings so that did not mention how much time but he told and he also said that once i am finished with my uh 
history uh, then i should inform him the examiner he was sitting right in the corner i should inform him and then he will give me a brief brief is a patient notes from uh, old patient notes where i could so i started talking with the patient why was he here what was his complaint and entire history the patient had hemophilia that the first question i asked him like why are you here and he told me that uh, he was there to take his regular injections they asked what injections uh, he said i take factor 7 every two weeks and i was like factor 7 okay bleeding disorders okay uh, i was told him what for what is your diagnosis like what do you know i asked him do you know why do you take it he said yeah i have hemophilia a i'm like yeah okay now this was unprepared and he was like not a young child he was like around uh, 75 or 80 years old man uh, so i okay i was like slowly slowly started taking history uh, he had hemophilia he had uh, then he he showed me that he has uh, knee prothesis that is uh, knee uh, total knee replacement uh, total knee replacement he has had uh, he, he could not bend his knee properly could not straight, straighten his knee properly he always had pain in his knees uh, then he told me about uh, infections how he it comes he then he started telling me about his family tree uh, who had uh, this kind of infection uh, this kind of hemophilia in his family he had a family tree on his iphone he showed me the tree and so i was starting i was taking his tree and then uh, i asked him about uh, blood transfusion he said yeah i mentioned uh, i wrote it down I asked him about infections like uh, frequent infections or anything like that he said no then i told the examiner that okay i'm done i have my history i've taken the history what i wanted to take then he asks me are you sure i was like yeah maybe i'm sure uh, then he said okay then i'll give you a list a, a brief that is a previous patient note and you can uh, verify have you asked everything or not then he uh, printed out some paper and gave it to me and i read this patient had not told me about hiv this patient has not told me about hepatitis c this patient has not told me about his oral candidiasis history uh, he did not tell me about his jaundice history so then i was a little bit more skeptical that i thought i was losing the game uh, then i asked the patient relevant questions about hiv about uh, his anticorper level his uh, antibody levels cd4 levels uh, patient did not know that the doctor printed his labs for me then what medications he was taking the patient did not know that the doctor printed again the medications list for me that time i realized this i was asking the right questions so and that doctor uh, was providing me all the information so, okay now what now you have cd4 this one how much now what, what is the level what infections do you expect he was not asking but then i was asking the patients okay here cd4 levels 500 what kind are the opportunistic infections do we expect at this level so i was asking the patients about this level that uh, do you have oral candidiasis or do you uh, or not not like that oral candidiasis but do you have infection in mouth or do you have or, uh, something white growing so those things so and the doctor was observing everything then uh, he asked me to examine the patient uh, after all the history uh, I, he asked me to examine the patient uh, he like i examined the lung and the uh, heart and the, i did the hip, hip examination as well i did the knee examination uh, verbal uh, that is the spine examination i checked for because he was a uh, hiv patient and has like chronic illnesses since long i was checking for lymph nodes uh, and everything I, che I checked for his liver because of hepatitis so uh, that was the, the yeah that was it then after that the examiner asked me to like write all the findings in detail uh, like in detail as in write all the findings in piece of paper and then report back to the uh, vivas section where we have already met previously met so i thanked the patient for his time and he wished me very good luck and i was like yeah okay you lie to me all the time and then he wished me all good luck but then that was i was like okay yeah fine thank you very much then he left and I sat in that room. The doctor also left because he had to conduct viva for other candidates. Those have already come. So I took around 20 minutes time to write all that in a note. I like mention everything in the piece of paper. And then 
I went back to the Viva room. There, uh, one candidate was already in there, so I waited there. He was out, and uh, he he left. Then I was invited inside, and uh, then they asked me to present my case. Then I started uh, with that this year, like the normal case presentation. These things, this case presentation, this examination videos and examination system. These things are there on Ambos website. You, you Ambos is A M B O S S. You Google this, you'll find that Ambos. Uh, so you you can prepare from that in a very systematic manner. So uh, I went to the yeah. I, then they started me to when they asked. They asked me to present my case. I started presenting the case, and they uh, started interrupting in between when I said something. When I, I by mistake told that this patient had blood transfusion in 1973, and since then he has HIV. Uh, the question was a very logical question was that, but HIV was discovered in 1981. So how could uh, he had? Yeah, that, that time I realized my mistake. That yeah, that is. I mean, yeah. I, I apologized. I said, yeah, yeah, I mistake because that time I realized that no, I was getting anxious. That's why I was speaking nonsense. So I was like, I composed myself once again. Yeah, okay, no, I had. So I presented all the cases. They were also the other two surgeons, those who were who did not know about the case. They were also a little bit uh, amazed that about the complication, about the array of diseases this person had. Uh, the number of diseases that this person had, this patient had, and I like I was talking about each and every uh, with a differential diagnosis and all. So this was a uh, patient. Uh, then they asked me about the opportunistic infections. What infections do you expect? Uh, the, the, about the treatment regimen. Uh, what kind of uh, medicines does a person use? The side effect of medicines. The specifically, what they asked me like, uh, okay, this patient takes these antiretroviral medications, and uh, uh, you want to operate on his knee, suppose. So, uh, what anticoagulation will you uh, not use? Basically, what anticoagulant has a uh, interaction with what will with which uh, antiretroviral therapy medicine? So, I was I did not know that specific answer to that. I told them basic things like he has liver dysfunction, so we will not use nevirapine. Uh, I gave them basic, uh, as we, I said that, okay, we'll uh, put it on heparin and uh, we'll not have any interaction, we'll do that, we'll not go for any hi-fi, uh, oral anticoagulants, we'll stick at the basic level. So those things, but then uh, this, uh, again, uh, one more thing was that he is already hemophilic, he already has a bleeding condition, you don't need to put anticoagulation, that was also a point I made. Uh, that he does not need but it has to be regulated so uh, those kind of things they started then uh, there were questions from uh, trauma surgery about uh, knee uh, about this um, infection about the plastic surgeon about the how uh, the skin transplant about the post-operative infection uh, there were questions from the child uh, surgeon the pediatric surgeon about hypothetical questions about checking the opinion my opinion and my views upon some surgery which can be dangerous for the child and uh, the child is now like what was 14 years that time when he first came to you you uh, you explained and you avoided the surgery now is 18 and he wants that surgery uh, definitely and if you do not do it he'll go to somebody else then what do you do uh, how do you convince the child what do you like that was all about uh, how good you are in uh, explaining and communicating with a child, with a, with a child, not I mean, um, eighteen year old man, uh, how good you can advocate as patient advocate. How good can you? Will you say that? Okay, fine. You want to go to somebody else? You go. I don't care. Uh, no. Are you going to do that, or are you going to uh, take him with you, sit with him, and do all your efforts to convince him otherwise? Are you going to take that effort? That was basically they wanted to know. I mean, that is what I understand from, uh, from that question. That they they built that uh, pediatric surgeon. He built up the question for like uh, 10, 15 minutes. What if that? What if that? What if his mother comes? What if? It, it was all about uh, your ethics as a doctor, your advocacy of patient, your uh, benefit of the patient for like keeping that in the forefront, or just sharing sharing responsibility that okay, I'm a surgeon. I have give a service, you want operation, you come to me, I will give you operation. What is your approach? They wanted to see that approach. The other questions were like, 
about the radiation therapy, not therapy, but the radiation protection. What if a child comes and you suspect that there is a fracture, but you are not sure, the clinical science does not show that uh, it's fracture. It can be, it cannot be, you don't know, what will you do? So uh, either uh, my answer was like, no, it does not have a consequence, like if it's going to, uh, if, the, uh, if the radiology uh, examination, that is the x-ray, is going to be done just for diagnosis, uh, like, Zishirum, uh, it is called that to just to confirm a diagnosis, then I would not do that. I would rather have an unclear diagnosis uh, uh, and uh, uh, rather than uh, putting subjecting a child to a radiation uh, like test if the consequence is going to be the same. Even if I like, for example, uh, the, what I meant was like if uh, the consequence of my treatment is going to be same, even if it is broken or not broken i'm going to put it in cast maybe say a couple of weeks or what, whatever the treatment therapy if the consequence is not going to be if it's going to be just the same for both the diagnosis then i would not do the test that was my whole point which i took a lot of time to explain to them because i did not know how to formulate and how to and they also like that uh, surgeon he had a lot of interruptions and a lot of questions uh, in between but then finally he was convinced by my answer luckily and yeah then this uh, then again came the turn from oncologist and this oncologist uh, had a lot of uh, lab papers for me he gave gave it to me these lab reports uh, that uh, uh, from with pancytopenia and uh, also this thalassemia and those things and then he uh, like all, it was all hematology of cases all our lab reports what is you what are you going to do is it sepsis not sepsis uh, how are you going to treat it those kind of things so it was in total 60 minutes exam this oral exam was in total for 60 minutes and at the end of 60 minutes i was like totally uh, out of words out of breath and uh, out of depth depth as well i might call it i have given everything i knew i have told them everything i knew uh, most important thing which i realized was that uh, the books which i have read for the entire month uh, those helped me a lot. They asked me a lot of questions about uh, thrombosis prophylaxis, about anticoagulation, about uh, yeah, the, and thrombosis prophylaxis was the main thing. The new, the latest developments, the new things, the side effects, those things. Uh, apart from the bookish knowledge which I have learned uh, from books, they asked me a lot of things about that I have learned during my work at uh, in the hospital. They asked me about uh, syncope, the collapse, uh, how will you re reanimate a patient, what will you uh, do? Uh, the questions were like, okay, this is a situation, what will you do? This is a situation, this is, what will you do? The nurse calls you up with this, 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 what, what will be your response? So that was a very practical thing which uh, I have learned by working in the hospital and that I would recommend that it's a very uh, positive thing is to help you a lot if you have some hospital experience in Germany and after that you take this exam it's going to help you a lot just bookish knowledge and some maybe there are a lot of courses of approbation uh, preparation courses uh, I don't know how useful they are I mean I have not seen anybody who has cleared the exam uh, and had uh, only done these courses and not worked in a hospital because people have met have already worked in a hospital and working in a hospital helps you a lot so at the end, uh, they sent me out uh, for like, and they wanted to discuss with each other. Uh, after 10 minutes, they called me again inside and then they informed me that uh, I have satisfactorily answered most of their questions and then they think that my knowledge and my skills are equivalent to a German doctor and they wished me good luck and all the formalities and then they told me to like, then they congratulated me and sent me back. So this was my experience uh, in total, like uh, it was around two, three hours in total. You take about patient history and everything. So, but the major grilling was for one hour and successfully like uh, I could uh, finish it with good re uh, result. Uh, so I wish you all guys a very, what you might call, uh, I wish that you guys study well and uh, take this exam very seriously. Don't uh, take it lightly because if you, they are fair basically, they are uh, there to judge you. If you perform well, they will pass you. If you don't, they will not pass you. 
so uh, that is the whole point it's not that they don't have an agenda that okay foreign doctors we don't want them we don't uh, will uh, like fail them it's not like that at least neither zaksan in, in the commission which i met they were there they were hinting they were guiding they were interrupting it was a very interactive session they but they check like the length and depth of your knowledge and your skills skills not so much but knowledge definitely so prepare well for the exam that's the only uh, tip i would say books and the website have already told you guys and uh, wish you all the best thank you very much